visit our newly remodeled Freedom Village Healthcare Center, conveniently located near three hospitals and always open to the public. We offer short-term stays as you recoup from a surgery and longer stays for more acute care with an option to stay in our private Serenity Suite. Call today to learn about the longevity of our caring staff who provide first-class health care, on-site rehabilitation, therapy, and energizing activities. Call Freedom Village today. Freedom Village is located right up El Toro Road in Lake Forest. I know because I pass by there every single day on the way to work and on the way home. And we have Joel Nibble here today. He's the administrator of Freedom Village. You've been there for uh, 11 years or so, right? Yes, 11 years. And uh, I, I know that from our conversations before, how much it's grown, how much it's, it's changed, and how you've added all kinds of uh, different services there. And one of them is your health care. And today you've brought along a doctor, Dr. Jordan Turner, a psychiatrist who specializes in geriatric, geriatric long-term care. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks nice to meet me. you. you. And Joel, we've talked about this before. Uh, you've brought on uh, some other guests as well. Tell me briefly just a little bit about the, uh, some of the added benefits you at Freedom Village offers. You obviously are a place if somebody uh, just wants a, a place to live and that's fine, and they're pretty uh, um, self-reliant. You, uh, you certainly have that there. But you also offer these uh, uh, different services there in your health care and things like that. Yes, thank you, Ken. Yeah, Freedom Village is a continuing care retirement community, as probably a lot of the viewers are aware of. Um, and we offer independent living, assisted living, and skilled nursing. Mm -hmm. And in the independent living, we have, um, if I may share just one or two things, we have amazing Chef Hugo, award-winning Chef Hugo, yep. who's there. He sets up the menu, he, he sets up the dining experience. We have amazing activity programs where they're always coming and going. And we have clinical services to support the independent living residents, the Freedom Village family, to sustain um, their independence longer. And when they transition over to the healthcare center where we have the assisted living as well as the skilled nursing, um, we have uh, different types of program. But specifically with the guest today with Dr. Turner who's here, we partner with him in our skilled nursing setting to manage the continuum care from when someone's coming from home for short-term therapy, what that might mean in terms of medication management, or, and for the long-term care um, residents that we have. And then also he has a specialty in geriatrics, and he can maybe share a little bit about that with us. But, but uh, certainly we're, we're very proud to be partners with Dr. Turner, and he compliments the care at Freedom Village. Yeah, Dr. Turner, uh, geriatric long-term care, obviously that encompasses a whole lot. Your specialty is uh, your psychiatrist. So just tell me some of the things how that plays into uh, geriatrics. Sure, uh, well I'm, I'm in a group of psychiatrists and we provide um, services, uh, well one of our focuses is geriatric psychiatric care, providing services to seniors where they live. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's fun, I'm very proud of that. Um, and uh, uh, I, I'm very proud to partner with, with Joel and the others there. Um, and it's great. It's, 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 it's a wonderful focus, and I think it's a wave of the future. And uh, sometimes people confuse psychologists and psychiatrists. That's right. So give us a little briefing on that. Well, I had the opportunity and uh, privilege and um, uh, experience of going to medical school. Mm -hmm. And uh, after medical school, you can choose a wide variety of specialties, as you may know, and psychiatry is one of them. So uh, with the medical school background, I may be able to uh, prescribe medicine or offer a therapy or whatever my patient may, may need. Psychologists uh, have, a, have a different focus and different training and different expertise. And I, uh, I work with closely with psychologists and, and, uh, and, and in teams. As, as psychiatry needs to be practiced, I think it's best in teams. Does uh, so a lot of the needs that maybe um, people may have uh, that you might deal in would be dementia, Alzheimer's, things like that. Is this, uh, is this something that um, being the fact that uh, if they're at Freedom Village and they're in the uh, skilled nursing or, or uh, assisted living center, this is something that you can provide? Yes, yes, and it needs good attention. So there, there's okay. going to be many patients with a variety of needs. So I'll find myself okay. in a variety of roles, <clears throat> but I need, I need to pay attention to some of them as they, as they grow older. And um, the memory loss, some of the memory loss is very normal, but sometimes right. it becomes problematic. Mm -hmm. 
And as it becomes problematic, we need to uh, intervene and offer support. Uh, when somebody begins to have memory loss, are they cognizant of that fact? Do they, uh, you know, maybe they're speaking to you and they go, you know what, I, I, I am noticing and it's that I don't remember things much anymore. It's a good, certain it's things. A good question. And that would be, you know, then you have a twofold thing. You have, yes, they're not, they're losing some of their memory, but they're being that they're aware of it now is obviously extremely frustrating. Oh, that you, could play on their emotions. You, you've said it. And so, so the, there's a variety of, of, of uh, memory loss troubles. Mm -hmm. And some of those troubles, a patient's not aware. And it's the families that come to me right. and say, dad's forgetting keys or, or, or that sort of thing. And other types of dementia, patients are aware, and it can be very demoralizing. And so one mm -hmm. of my roles would be to contextualize it, offer um, a prognosis and some solutions. Uh, and it, and it's, a, it's a great privilege to talk about uh, something that's uh, important to so many families. You hear a lot with, uh, with people who are, um, they have the beginning stages of dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever it might be, that the number one thing is keeping their mind active, is that th their mind stimulated because they, it actually can either prolong or help out, right? You're correct. So uh, keeping your mind active can be, um, is important, mm -hmm. keeps the mind alive, keeps it working, keeps it wired. Um, I think what's also important is, uh, is structure, uh, predictability, mm -hmm. strong relationships. Um, and those can, for instance, if, if, I'm, if I'm having trouble with my memory, I, I do have a, a strong familiarity with my with, with persons I know, or family, or friends, or in a home, or with mm -hmm. a good staff, and that type of structure, um, along with stimulation, can be very soothing for a soul that's 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 uh, confused or in distress. Joel, with your uh, your independent living side, does your staff uh, when they when they see somebody or no, start to notice maybe somebody who's living there? kind of um, has the, they can notice the beginning stages of dementia or Alzheimer's. Is this an opportunity where you would sit down with the family if they're, if they're available and say, you know what, your, your dad, your grandfather, whatever, they're doing fine, but there's certain signs that we're beginning to notice. And is this an advantage that you folks have there? Because you have the skilled nursing side as, uh, as well. That's an excellent question. In, in the independent living, assisted living, and skilled, and predominantly in the assisted living and the skilled arena, because the, the monitoring is significantly more, um, I, I guess we, we monitor that at a, at a microscopic level, if you will, because mm -hmm. we're with them all day long. We're yeah. seeing them continuously, and we're watching the behavior patterns, and we're interacting with them. So we're able to identify quickly if someone's, um, their, their memory abilities, or if there's something about their behavior is, is diminishing. Um, a lot of that could be centered around dementia, uh, dementia or depression, really, and then the, the differentiation between dementia, delirium, and Alzheimer's, which really it takes an expert like Dr. Turner to come in, sit, and evaluate. Because a lot of times people, the residents, um, might be misdiagnosed because they're having, um, you know, a situation that might cause them to be, their, their memory impairment might um, be heightened, they might be added confusion, um, but it might just be uh, something that they're going through with their body. Um, and then um, instead of uh, addressing just the, the behavior or a single diagnosis, we want to kind of address the whole person. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where, um, when in partnering with um, the physicians, of course, but, but Dr. Turner then would come in and, and he does uh, every two weeks or three weeks, he'll sit and he'll evaluate all of the residents in the skilled nursing and then periodically um, as needed, he'll come in and, and we'll say, this is where we're at. He'll, he'll work with the, the nurses and review the doctor's notes and make a determination if the person is at their highest quality of life and at their highest functioning level based upon their medication that they're on. And, and uh, so it's a real nice safety net to have um, Dr. Turner's expertise there. But yeah, we're constantly monitoring that um, from day to day. And doctor, you know, Joel just, just said something that I'm obviously you're going to look at is their medications because that could be causing some types of uh, delirium and it, it just as simple as maybe adjusting their medications. Right? That's right. I have to look at the patient as a whole and find out what's what and sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard. It's sort of a mystery and, and it's a work in progress and that's why I need good teams like mm -hmm. at Freedom Village. And uh, when uh, something like this comes about, if there is family available that are active uh, with the person that's there, 
you of course you you bring them in and, and sit down with them and talk and saying we're you know we're beginning to notice that uh, your your mom or what is you know is changing a little bit. Uh, she's forgetting things more, and then you discuss what are the next steps, what can be done. That is correct. And one of the goals in, in working at Freedom Village and what we do with our residents is that we're not just caring for the resident, we're caring for the family. And what we're doing is we're nurturing the family along. So whether it's a spouse or the kids of the parents that are there, um, we have to spend equally, um, uh, if not more sometimes, T time with them, educating them about where mom or dad is at. Mm -hmm. And then we try to nurture them along. And, and we try to educate them. Because a lot of times it's just the educational component. Right. And a lot of times they're, when someone has dementia, delirium, and they're starting to be an emotional separation from the kids or from their yeah. spouse, you know, they're, they're having uh, starting, be, uh, starting um, steps in, in, in bereavement, you know, the mm -hmm. separation of someone yeah. that they love. So we do spend time with the family to try to walk them through that. Um, but um, for the, you know, the advanced situations, obviously we, we would slant and lean on Dr. Turner's assistance because when he's interacting with the resident, he's for sure going to call the family, interact with the family um, if need be. So that's the goal is really as we, right. we broaden this perspective that we're talking about today from the residents, really the family unit, whoever the, uh, the family might be that's directly involved. Yeah, we try to nurture all of those. And by doing that, we, um, we feel that we accomplished the goal of doing what we can to provide mm -hmm. them with the best environments. Well, very good. I want to give the uh, phone number there, uh, 949, uh, obviously, 472-4733. And that's the main number they can call and, and get to any department that, that is want up there. And yes. All right. Thank you very much. Doctor, it's been a pleasure. And uh, uh, good, you know, good information about the, the, um, the way that a psychiatrist interacts with people uh, with uh, geriatric uh, long-term care. And uh, it's great information because it's something I don't think we, we talk about enough. But uh, for you to, to be there and to, to evaluate whether it's the medications, whether it indeed they're becoming, have the onset of uh, Alzheimer's, whatever it may be, I can see it's a, a great benefit to have. Thank you very much for both of you. All right, again, there's a number on the screen for Freedom, Freedom Village, 472-4733. And as I said, they're in Lake Forest. They're right up the road off El Toro. All right, we'll talk to you in just a minute. We'll be right back. Very good. Come and see the newly remodeled Freedom Village Assisted Living, which is open to the public. We offer a loving, caring staff who provide assistance with all personal care and medication management. Stimulating activities can energize your life here in a wide variety of inviting family areas. With an amazing menu created by our award-winning Chef Hugo. Call Freedom Village Assisted Living today and ask about our short-stay respite program. <laughs>